Hi there, welcome to the new project of time series analysis and forecasting where we will look at the new data set for forecasting and analyzing it within the Python. So as you must have seen my previous videos where we have looked at the different ways in which, uh, which you can apply into the time series and we will follow some of those ways into this project as well and you will see step by step approach. So I recommend that you see, see this video right from uh, start to end and within this we will even discuss some of the interview question that may come uh, when you are applying or when you are giving an interview as well as during the business scenarios many times situation comes when you need to give some specific answers related to that and we will see uh, where, as and when the scenario is coming we will be discussing it so keep watching this till the end and uh, by the end give me the recommendation or suggestion in the comments about what you want to see and uh, uh, what what do you like in this video what you did not like and uh, what I can improve upon so that I can give you a better experience going forward all right so before so without any delay let's start this by importing the pandas as pd importing the matplotlib dot pyplot as plt and percentage matplotlib inline so these three libraries one of the very common libraries i am importing pandas as you know for the import of data sets and uh, matplotlib is to basically plot the data and this percentage matplotlib matplotlib inline helps to plot the whatever you know graphics that we want to plot like bar or line chart uh, within the command line build just below to the execution window otherwise if we don't have this we will have to use like a pyplot.show which is a separate command altogether and i just want to avoid writing more and more code but we just want to optimize this entire process with the help of percentage matplotlib inline so now with this explanation if this question is coming into an interview you know it why you do it all right so let's go ahead and uh, start this so what do i have is basically a very small uh, because it is mostly uh, from a learning perspective if you are here i'm sure that you want to learn the time series analysis and forecasting so it's always good to start with a small data set because with this small data set you can uh, better understand the data as well as uh, you know uh, do uh, much or get a much better understanding from all the operations that we will be doing so first of all pd dot read underscore csv because it is a csv file and it is a it is in the same folder where my this particular file is so i'll just go ahead and simply say shampoo dot csv if this file is uh, stored somewhere else like for example c colon sorry c colon forward slash that should be capital c users slash shampoo dot csv whatever the path is make sure you have the forward slash uh, when you provide it because by default uh, you get the backslash when you are in windows so just just to make sure that you have the forward slash so this is the data set you can find the instruction to get the data set within the description and uh, for to just to show you what it has is this month and sales and this is the index number zero one two three four so right now if you see the type of shampoo is the data frame but what we need is basically a time series right so what we can do is uh, another interview question how you convert how you will import the csv file as a time series data set and the parameters i'm going to discuss is a very important one so give a strong focus i will keep suggesting you whenever uh, there is something tricky that i'm doing because i'm sure that it may or it it may come into the interview or for sure they will ask you from a different angle to check your knowledge into the uh, into the data import or the data manipulation process so shampoo and pd dot read underscore csv shampoo dot csv so what do we need in in this scenario first is we need to keep the index as month because our, once we do that we can do a better manipulation of the data let's say if you want to search 
only for the second month so right now it is first month one zero one month two month one zero two so the second date third date fourth date fifth date so if you want to see or do a manipulation that a specific point of data frame or a range of data frame we want to see we can do that manipulation very easily if we have the month into the index and then we want to make sure that uh, this this is going into a series instead of data frame so first of all we will say index underscore column zero this is a zero column and uh, parse underscore dates equals to true so that means uh, what we are specifying that it is a dates column and we want it to be a proper date and then finally the important parameter which will convert it into the time series squeeze equals to true so if i press shift tab tab you will see all of these parameters over here so index underscore call here squeeze here by default it is false so i have kept kept it as true because i want that and parse underscore dates should be somewhere Pars underscore dates is something which I mentioned as true. So if I go ahead and execute it, and now if I see, sh sorry, shampoo. Now it is pandas series instead of data frame. So that's a very important question that you will see that how you can convert a data frame or when you are importing the CSV file, how you can convert it directly into a uh, time series so the next thing after that is how you can plot it well the see the, the plotting is pretty easy simply say plot pandas has these inbuilt function where by default it plots the line and as you can see from first of jan till uh, th december third december is something what it has been or uh, the March 12 what it has plotted the value and uh, it's, it's a clear indication that a trend is present with some cyclical variation like this 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 or a bit of a seasonal variation but a clear perspective that trend is present sometimes uh, you may want to change the style a little bit and can be an interview question that instead of line if I let's say need to show the uh, just the dots or the circles so there is something uh, which is a parameter and you can say style equals to k dot if i do that this this is changed into dots so sometimes uh, the dot representation and an easier one and sometimes the line representation is quite easy default is line if you see we don't have specified any parameter that's why the lining is easy but sometimes you will see that uh, dot you know specifying or having the dots on the plot is something which is making sense all right so after that what we can have is uh, basically just to know how many data points it has so shampoo dot size so it has 36 data points and then if we want we can describe it which will give us a good idea about the statistic of this data set so this is a C, C, the shampoo data set and total 36 is the count and that's what the count over here when we used sorry the size uh, method over here and or the size property method is this this could be a, a interview question what is the difference between a method and the property so this is a method uh, which has the parenthesis and it can have some arguments as well and then we have uh, count count is uh, the count simply count and then the mean is basically an average uh, mean and if you see 50 percent is basically median so 280 so what is the difference between a mean and median if if you don't know this i highly recommend that you go ahead and just search it because that's a very important interview question what is the difference between mean and median and in a nutshell if i tell you mean is simply taking all the values summing that up and dividing by the count of value 
and median is which is 50 percent median is is simply the fifth the middle value in a, in an ordered list so first of all you put everything in an order and then you see what is the middle value so suppose if you have 30th value so 15th is your middle so 15th whatever the value is at 15th data point that will be the value over here but the important is it is an it should be an ordered list and then question arises the interview may interviewer may ask okay if that's the case then uh, what what would you do in in which scenario you will use mean and in which scenario you will use the median and i recommend i can give you an answer but i really want that you go ahead and uh, search it about on google and let me know in the comments what what did you find but that's an interview question a tricky one and then there there is uh, another brother or sister to mean or median which is mode and mode is the basically the most repeated value in the column that's that is also these are basically part of a send, uh, measure of central tendency which is a statistics concept uh, when you read about it uh, the statistics it it all becomes pretty clear so these are the values and then it shows the standard deviation the one standard deviation is 148 and uh, the maximum value is 682 ideally ideally you should be able to interpret all of this if you really want to be on the uh, data science side what is a standard deviation over here how you would interpret 148 what does this value basically says 148 when it comes like i just described the mean and median right so now let's go ahead and uh, first of all uh, one of the process that we do in the time series analysis is smoothing the time series. So smoothing of time series is basically done by calculating the moving average. So what we'll do is shampoo underscore moving average is shampoo dot rolling and we will say window equals to. So what it means is um, how many first three values five values so for how many average uh, values we want to take an average i have shown this concept in my very first video on the time series if you want you can go back and look at that but what it basically indicates that uh, five day moving average six day moving average in that first five days moving average takes into the consideration and uh, on the fifth day you get a one value so that means the first four value basically gone and then the value is basically starting from the fifth day so right now i just take 10 and then i want average if i do that and if i plot this you see that it is very smooth and some of the initial data point has gone and the value is starting from 111 because i use the window equals to 10 so the first couple of values uh, up until 9 the value has gone so from 10th it will be starting 11 is here 12 13 and then so on and so forth if you see this is a very smoothed smooth series as compared to this one so just to understand whether this series is following any trend if it is not very clearly visible you use the moving average over here and moving average very uh, highly used into the stock market analyst as well as in some business studies as well but stock market analyst is the one area where i have seen that this moving average is being used a lot a lot okay so with that what we can do now is uh, create a baseline model so so this is just for the representation that uh, how you create a moving average which is also an interview question and the interview question is also about uh, the the window size that we you need to basically have and uh, what is the downside of having the large window size so i've explained that entire thing to you now what i want is uh, simply the uh, creation of baseline model so what is a baseline model so if i just say shampoo right so what baseline model really 
helps in the time series and it, it is an interview question that what is a baseline model if if or what is a naive model which is or what is a starting model all of these are like common terms that baseline naive or initial model which is like defining your baseline below this if there is any model just remove that so so the first model is like no brainer i mean anybody who does not even know about data science should be able to do it and the method behind or the assumption behind that is that the previous value which is this in this case previous value is the best reflector of the next value so for 260 for second january so this is a second gen this is a first gen for second january the best reflector or the best prediction as per the naive model or the initial model is the previous value so for second it will be 1266 for third it will be 145 for fourth it will be third so what it basically assume that the previous values are related to the current value so what we have observed last day will going to reflect also in the current day with some more variation and with this assumption into the time series uh, we go ahead and create the naive model so to do that what i need to use is basically the shift method shift method helps to shift the data points one point down right so what i do is shampoo underscore base equals to I will use some method. I will explain you pd dot concat because I am not going ahead and creating a separate uh, uh, you know column altogether using a common technique. But I am just creating. I am concatenating as well as creating, which is a process, little advanced process, then following it very step by step. So what I am saying is, I need shampoo in this. Shampoo is one column. or the one series and uh, shampoo dot shift by 1 that means put the shift down and x is equals to 1 so if i execute this you will see that shampoo underscore base is this sales 266 but for forecast it will be here 266 145 is here 183 is here so the structure of our baseline model is created or the naive model is created however if you know that you should not have this particular value which is a missing value in this case it gives an error when you evaluate the error metric so so whenever we produce model we need to remove these values and before that we need to give the names to these two right so we need to rename the column so how you rename the column again for beginners it is an interview question related to the uh data manipulation so shampoo dot base columns what what happens when you execute this it gives you the column names like this so what i am doing is i am following the same methodology equals to within the bracket i will just specify the new name over here that is it saying actual sales so just to make you very very simple that what i am doing and how it is reflecting so this is what the representation it needs and that's the representation i have given over here if i execute this and again say shampoo underscore base dot hat so actual sales forecast sales all right so now we have renamed the column the next thing is dropping this value and to do that the method is remember this this comes very frequently drop any if you do that if i do that what happens value is dropped right but there is a catch over here first of all remember the method drop any drop any is a method that you use to drop the nan or the missing values wherever it present so it removes the entire row if you see but if you see shampoo underscore base the problem is the missing value has come back right so what you need is basically a parameter over here in this method which is in place equals to true 
So this makes sure that whatever changes, changes is basically dropping the NA value is uh, saved or has become part of the data set. So if I execute this and now I am here, shampoo base, if you see the value is removed. If you want to check it again in a new column, shampoo underscore base dot head, you don't have that value. So this way you make sure that you have the proper parameters and everything present over here, which is responsible for making sure that your data set is that uh, your data set is properly made for the baseline model. Now let's go ahead and import the mean squared error metric and the numpy array for the calculation of error between the actual and forecast sales. So from sklearn dot matrix import mean squared sqar squared error <clears throat> and then import numpy as np so why mean squared error simply gives us the mean squared error but the problem is it is squared so it cannot be we cannot interpret it in the same term so to remove the square what we need to use is np.sqrt the square root method which will keep it in the form which is similar to this value or in the same matrix system in which this value is being calculated so let's go ahead and execute this and uh, after that we have shampoo underscore error mean squared error shampoo base dot actual sales shampoo base dot forecast sales right so if we see shampoo error so the value is 11715, which is definitely not anywhere related to the matrix system that this particular uh, this particular data set follows. It may be in thousands or it may be in millions, who knows, but this is definitely not following this. So what we need is np.sqrt and uh, then the shampoo error and this is like 108 so now the value you can relate it with this particular metric which is in the similar lines so 108 maybe in the thousands or the millions you can interpret it as per the the you know uh, the math the metric that your data is following all right so that's now what we can do is we can create different types of models for example, there is a moving average model, there is an auto regressive model, uh, there is differencing that you can do to make the series stationary and whatnot. So, but at the end of the day, if you will see most of the practitioner, the real time, those who really work, basically use the ARIMA method, which is auto regressive integrated moving average. So, for it, so it contains everything. It it contains auto regressive it is integrated it is moving average all of that is part of one one single model so i just don't want to use and uh, you know make this video very very long but just want to make it concise so that we focus on the main topic which is arima and within arima if you say you can create an auto regressive model how you just specify the term or the parameter for ar which i'll show you for example arima is like this p d and q so in this you have p the parameter p is nothing but the auto regressive so let's say if we have the model arima 2 comma 0 comma 0 that means only the p term is specified so it is an auto regressive model so why should i go ahead and create a separate auto regressive model or if i say 0 comma 0 comma 2 then it is a ma model moving average model because we are not considering the last two so so if if you are a very very experienced practitioner and coming into the python this is the way you can do it you don't have to experiment and know a lot of different values within the arima you can basically create either auto regressive or the moving average or a combination of everything which i will going to do 
in just a couple of minutes. So autoregressive is uh, we need to calculate the autoregressive and uh, the moving average term by having the ACF and PACF. So just remember PACF is to evaluate the parameter for P which is autoregressive and ACF curve is for moving average. Okay. So let's go ahead and first of all get the stats models dot graphics dot TSA plots import plot underscore ACF and plot underscore PACF. So from the from this term, just remember PACF is for P. And then next another one which is without p is for q that's how i remember it if, if i if it is confusing like acf and the pacf all right pacf i mentioned pafc that's why it gave the error right so what i'll do is plot underscore acf to see the q term and that is shampoo data set I'm picking up the entire data set that I created previously, but not from the base model. So what it has is basically at the term zero, that means uh, this value is equal to this value. That's what zero basically mean me. Or if I just go back just for a better in, in view for you, <coughs> sorry about that. What it basically has at zero term is 266 equals to 266. Then what is the correlation between them? And at the one term, what is the correlation between these two? So that's what it basically calculates the correlation with the existing, the one previous term, the second previous term, the third previous term. So over here, it shows that the third previous term, the correlation is going below the range or the critical range. So, so when up till what value you have out of this critical range you consider that and uh, so for in this case the q will be the 3 0 1 2 3 so q or q is hash q is 3 is something what we figured it out now what i do is plot underscore pacf and shampoo and in this case after the second term 0 one two so you have p as two now what we need is basically differencing term d to make the series stationary <coughs> sorry all right so usually it is between zero to two okay so we will experiment it between zero to two maybe one is is sufficient but we can even try it with two so what it does is make the series stationary by removing the trend and the seasonality factor which is help, which helps us in doing the better prediction all right so now let's go ahead and uh, import the arima uh, model from the stats model so from stats models dot tsa time series analysis dot arima underscore model um what you have is arima execute this and uh, i'll just create the train and test so train is shampoo 0 to 25 and shampoo score test is basically shampoo 25 to 36 so it will take the value from 0 to 24 and you need to tell me why because this is an interview question and I already explained in one of my previous video if you have not followed it. So if you have not followed it, go ahead and see that what I just wanted to complete the sentence. All right. So first 25, uh, 24 values I have taken over here, rest of the values in this and if I execute, sorry, T-E-S-T, if I go ahead and execute this. <clears throat> you get the train and test data set so i'll just create the model which is arima using the train so train and test 
why we create it if that's what it is going in your mind just to make sure that when we evaluate our model we have some unseen data which we are keeping it in the test for the calculation of error metric which is a best practice so shampoo underscore train order order is what we need to specify three sorry two one three let's try with that sometimes it gives error but not an issue two one three so it's just a warning for now we can just go ahead and uh, ignore that and uh, now what we have is the shampoo model we need to fit it that's a part of the process once the model is created you need to fit using the shampoo underscore model dot fit you should include invertibility choose a different model order so it's not uh, allowing you to use this particular model so what i'll do is i'll use 313 no nope. three one two let me try that yeah in that case it has worked so it it gives based on how uh arima's uh, dependencies are on the model creation when you fit the data it basically gives a warning like in this case which says that whatever order that we have specified is not uh, consistent we need to have the consistency so generally in the case of arima we need to make sure that uh, we specify or experiment with couple of orders to get the right fit okay and i will tell you the model tuning also which is an automated way of doing the things so don't worry about this all right so once we have this we can have the <coughs> the forecast so shampoo underscore forecast and before i do the forecast i'll just tell you one more thing which is archaic information criteria which is used to see how good the model is once you fit it and lesser the value better the model shampoo underscore sorry shampoo underscore model fit dot aic 272 not an issue we'll just go ahead and uh, test it so now shampoo underscore forecast that means create the error metric forecast equals to shampoo model um, fit dot forecast and steps equals to um, so we took uh, 0 to 25 and that should be the next 11 values if i'm not wrong and zero all right so it has created so zero is basically contains the actual forecast value it has like two three different arrays which has like residuals and couple of other things so what we can do is now and p dot sqrt just to take the square root of the mean squared error i explained you already about this shampoo underscore test shampoo underscore forecast so first you will see the observed values or the unseen values and then forecast value if i go ahead and execute this what i get is the 130 is the error rate so 130 which which i got as part of the error that my this arima model contains i need to test it against my baseline model whether this model is better than the baseline model if it is not i will not accept this if it is better than the arima that model then i will accept that <coughs> so over here if you see the error is around 108 so you, so even the baseline model is working much better than the arima method over here so that shows that our baseline model is is much better when it comes to doing the prediction than our arima model right because the value that we got is 130 and value where here we got is 108 where it is 108 okay so this way you basically identifies whether you can accept the model or don't 
obviously you can tune the parameters and all and which is uh, basically the next thing which i can tell you so what i need to do is is in that case is we need to specify p underscore values equals to range in which range we want to evaluate the p value that means 0 1 2 3 4 what is that value so let's say we want to experiment between 0 to 5 um, d values between the range 0 to 3 and uh, q values we want to experiment between 0 to 5 okay let's go ahead and execute it and before i go ahead and execute this what i need is basically i want to import the warning because it will this process will show a lot of warnings so import warnings and warnings start filter warning say ignore this is a method if you want to ignore the warnings which are coming like this one okay all right so what i need is basically a loop where i can loop through these values so for p in p values with this i have already done in one of my previous video i'm just uh, uh, doing it again and i have explained it in a long detail that i am just iterating over pd and q value in the same order in which they go into the um, the order parameter of the arima method so p t q so this p is coming over here so first the p is going so zero and then this particular the iteration will happen and you will see the iteration also so for now i'll just go ahead and say train and test and uh, simply what i did earlier shampoo 0 to 25 and comma shampoo 25 to 36 and then predictions equals to list i want to store the prediction in a list so that i can test it in the using the test and uh, I need to loop through number of times the the test is uh, basically there. So for I in I in range of alien test, right? Because that's the number of times we have the values into the prediction and we want to store it. So we need to loop it through by that number of times. So it is 0 to 11 in that case and we want to just in case of an error so you have seen that error has come earlier we want to just continue when the error is coming and warnings will be removed in that case because we have already filtered the warnings arima and train order model underscore fit equals to model dot fit dis equals to zero i have already explained in my initial video about this particular displacement <clears throat> and then pred underscore y equals to model dot model underscore fit dot forecast want to get the forecast value which is stored in the first array and uh, then we say predictions dot append the predicted value which we just did in the above statement and then finally what we have is the error which is mean squared error and say test predictions <clears throat> and then we can print it the arima percentage s because it is a string rmse equals to up till two float value we want right and where it has gone percentage specify the order this is the order that we had thought that we had order what is the order that we are following right now and what is the error okay you can even have colon if you want or if you don't want that's also okay and then finally for try we say accept continue so we have just completed this model i hope it should work fine and if i execute it yes so without any issue it is 
if you can see 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, which is Q, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, right? And then 010, 011, and all of that. It's basically going on and showing you the different errors. So, what we can take is not this is not the RMSE route, this is just the MSE. Sorry, just the MSE. So, next time, whenever, whenever you run, say MSE, not RMSE. I may be experimenting with earlier. So, RMSE is, uh, is something which we will try. So, right now, the most smallest value we have got is one double eight eight four five, and if I just say calc one double eight four five, and I take a square root of that, we get one thirty seven, and one thirty seven is even higher than one thirty, which is even higher than our naive model. So our naive model is still winning, right? And it will take a minute, so I'll just pause the video. All right, so it has been completed. It took some time, but uh, like for example, around two, two and a half minute to complete all the iteration. And if you see, if I just scan it through, though there is a process that you can just have the minimum, uh, uh, you know, the MIN parameter to get the minimum value of the error. But for now, what I have is I can quickly scan through as I was watching it. 14492. Is there anything smaller than this? Um, no. So this model, 323, is our best model. So let's see whether this is smaller than the naive or not. 14492. Take a square, 120. And 120 is the error that we get in case of Arima 323. So 120, if I say 120, over here it is 130. So it's better, right? Our previous Arima method. And if I say the naive, where is our 108. So this model, even this model, which, which, is, which we have tuned it through, the parameter it, it is 120 if, if you see and still not better than the naive model so we will going to reject it and we will just keep it the keep the naive model until unless we find another better model and that requires let's say the log transformation or another types of transformations that uh, you one can apply and uh, figure it out the right value or maybe you want to furthermore experiment it with the moving averages and a couple of other things. But what I mainly wanted to talk, uh, talk about is basically how you can create naive model, the Arima model by your hand by evaluating ACF, PCACF, and finally the code which will help you the, uh, the figuring out all the different types of parameters which is required, uh, which if you see, you know, this, this entire process would require to do a lot of uh, uh, permutation combination in terms of trying these different parameters. But this simple script really helps you to, to evaluate entire, this entire thing. So that's about it. Let me know how do you see this video? What, what do you like? What you did not like? And uh, the things you want me to uh, continue to do or improve upon and that will be really amazing to see your comments in the comment section and uh, yeah till then thank you so much and don't forget to share it with your friends and colleagues